name is Elias Open. I run a website called thetrustedcoins.com. I'm a dealer in authentic ancient Greek, Roman, Biblical, Byzantine coins and artifacts. Every item I sell comes with a certificate of authenticity and it's guaranteed authentic for a lifetime. This certificate of authenticity is complete with my signature. I've identified over 28,000 authentic ancient items over the time and I am known all around the world as a numismatic and antique expert. Uh, each coin that you purchase comes in a flip, in a professional flip that you could you know, take off and carry around with you with a brief description of the professional description that you get here many times citing a major reference or collection. And on the reverse side you have a historical context of the item you purchased. So you know exactly what you're purchasing. My items are well described. I have the best um, rating and over 6,000 items. So good idea to visit that. Today I'm going to be actually talking about the ancient coinage during the Roman times of Macedonia that featured Alexander the Great and him riding his horse and also Bucephalus. Bucephalus was the horse of Alexander the Great. You see this, this coin over here? It features, it's a bronze coin from around 238 to 40 AD uh, featuring the head of Alexander the Great with loose flowing hair. Notice the patina, it's a, it's a dark green patina and that's how, what an ancient coin looks like. That's why the Statue of Liberty has the green color. It used to have a bronze color, it, looks, it used to look like a penny. And over time it got weathered and turned green. And then on the reverse side is actually have a beautiful depiction of um, Alexander the Great on his horse, Bucephalus over here, spearing an enemy that's fallen on the bottom. So this is a, and around it says coin on Macedon, Macedonian coin on. Uh, so that's rather interesting. So I'm going to tell you about the imagery of Alexander the Great coins, specifically about the coin. On the front was Alexander the Great, on the back, on his leg, he's on his legendary horse, Bucephalus, charging, right spearing an enemy whom lies on the ground with a shield and spear. Uh, the coin was actually issued to celebrate Olympic type games, Olympic style games honoring the memory of Alexander the Great. Specifically Alexander the Great was also from Macedonia. He was a Macedonian king that pretty much conquered the ancient world. And I have coins of him, I have this coin, I have a lot of different coins. So now let me tell you about Bucephalus, the interesting history of the legendary horse of Alexander the Great. Bucephalus, meaning ox head, was Alexander the Great's horse and one of the most famous actual horses of antiquity. A massive creature with a massive head, Bucephalus is described as having black coat with a large white star on his brow. He is also supposed to have had a wool or blue eye and his breeding was that of the best Thessalian strain. In 344 BC, a 13 year old Alexander won the horse. A horse dealer named Philonicus the Thessalian offered Bucephalus to King Philip II for the sum of 13 talents. But because no one could tame the animal, Philip was not interested. However, Philip's son Alexander was. He promised to pay for the horse himself should he fail to tame it. He was given a chance and surprised all by subduing it. He spoke soothingly to the horse and turned it towards the sun so that it could no longer see its own shadow, which was the cause of its distress. Dropping his fluttering cloak as well, Alexander successfully tamed the horse. Plutarch says that the incident so impressed Philip that he told the boy, Oh my son, look thee out a kingdom equal to and worthy of thyself, for Macedonia is too little for thee. The Alexander romance presents a mythic variant of uh, Bucephalus' origin. In his tale, the cult whose heroic attributes surpassed even those of the Pegasus, is bred and presented to Philip on his own estates. The mythic attributes of the animal are further reinforced in the romance by the Delphic Oracle, who tells Philip and the destined king of the world will be the one who rides Bucephalus, a horse with the mark of the ox's head on his haunch. As one of his chargers, Bucephalus served Alexander in numerous battles. 
His legend fired the imagination of many artists from the ancient to the modern world. Bucephalus died at the age of 30, an old age for a horse. Other sources given as a cause of the death fatal injuries at the Battle of Hydaspes, June of 326 BC, in which Alexander's army defeated King Porus. Alexander promptly founded a city, Bucephala, in honor of his horse. Julius Caesar also had a favorite horse. Eccentric Roman Emperor Caligula, who made a great fuss of his horse in Citatus, holding birthday parties for him, riding him while adorned with Alexander's breastplate and planning to make him counsel. Coinage in the name of Alexander the Great continued long after the king's death. By the time of his death, the age of 33, he ruled a vast empire stretching from Greece to India. The provincial coinage uh, in the name of the district council Koinon, uh, I told you earlier, Macedonian Koinon, which was written on the reverse where Alexander was writing, was not a very common at the time of Augustus and the formation of the provincial governments. Most cities issued coinage in their own names, either as autonomous or as an in individual subjects of the emperor or client king. We know of coiner in Macedon and Thessaly in Greece, also in the islands of Lesbos, Crete, and Cyprus. They were, of course, they were of course under Roman control. In fact, Roman proconsul or provincial governor is sometimes named on these coins. Also, a lot of these times, these coins had a neocorus neo, or neocorid status. Neocorus was a Greek title which designated the individual who was in charge of the in, interior of a temple and looked out for the temple's needs. In Roman times, provincial Greek cities often styled themselves as the neocori of the imperial cult. The proclamation of neo, neocorid on coins was often accompanied by the depiction of the temple. Originally, it was imperial policy that only one neocorate would be allowed in a city. The ruler was later relaxed, and several cities were allowed two or three neocorates. In the wonderful area of study, research, and uh, numismatics, this is an interesting field to study. So buy authentic ancient coins, or just check them out on my website, trustthecoins.com, where there's a lot of historical references, beautiful pictures. You're going to love what you see. Thank you.